Hi there, it's Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder here with a brew. I know that I haven't been doing the Tuesday Brews Day, nor have I been doing the uh, Rogue's Alley or playing on a budget type decks for a while now. I missed a couple weeks due to ranting about the different formats. I'm still in a rant mode for sure because I don't think the Standard or Modern or Pioneer or Commander are in good positions right now due to the, the power creep and the amount of solitaire, un, uninteractive cards that have been printed in the recent years. Uh, however, I've built an interactive deck today that's kind of fun. Uh, one of the cards that I wanted to break was Nethroi. Made a couple of versions. Let's see how it started here. Uh, one of these times I should show the beginning of a deck, uh, just the idea of a deck, and how it, it um, progresses over time, because this is where I started with a Nethroi deck, and this was in a uh, kind of a blue shell. So the whole idea is Corpse Knight to be reanimated with Nethroi. So Nethroi states, uh, whenever a creature mutates, return any uh, number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So the whole combo was Corpse Knight and Spark Double, but it doesn't actually work that way. Spark Double has to have a target before the Corpse Knight comes into play. So Spark Double actually becomes very awkward in this. But the whole uh, idea of this was Spark Double at zero. Um, and there's a couple decks you can actually build with Nethroi and zero. Uh, we have three zero... Uh, X spells right now that just cost X and then we have a couple more in the form of Hydroid Crisis and Voracious Hydra and Ivy Elemental that also have zero power while they're reading in the graveyard and so you could actually build a deck where you self mill a lot and then the uh, Nethroi actually brings back everything because they have zero converted mana cost you could actually bring back all of your corpse knights and then if you have some other cards at that point um, the other ones you can run in this particular shell with all the zero drops is the vampire that leeches your opponent every time a creature dies because those come into play then immediately die because they have zero zero uh, toughness and then you can also run like a midnight reaper uh, with that to help you draw towards your Nethroi Apex of Death. So I thought that that would, might make a pretty decent shell. This this first deck, though, was all over the place. Decided to go with Yorion uh, to be able to blink, like the Risen Reef. I thought, okay, you got to ramp into Nethroi. So Leaf Kin Druid, Risen Reef, uh, Grazer Gilded uh, Goose, plus the Cavalier of Thorns. It was probably a pretty decent way to then ramp into Nethroi. Uh, Cavalier also self-mills. And then we also have Hydro Crisis Ramp Payoff. This deck ended up being kind of awkward, very awkward actually, with how it worked. Because sometimes it would work, I even had Euro in there, but Euro ends up being a non-bow with exiling cards from your graveyard. It just didn't work. Um, I had another version of this deck that was going to go Spark Doubles and Agent of Treacheries. So you have the Ramp Shell and then Nethroid was just another way to get those back. I think at that point you just might as well go into Elementals for the Agent of Treachery. It was kind of cool with like Spark Doubles coming back with Nethroid, bringing back some Agent of Treacheries. Um, and then being able to bring back like Thassa and, and then and then blinking them. But that ended up not being the best route to go either. So the way that I build Nethroi is, is either one of two ways. You could go Nethroi with the Des Oasis. So there's a card called Des. So let's just try and make this deck real quick of, of what I'm thinking. So Des Oasis is the card I'd run in here. And let's cut out all this stuff now that we don't... Well, Cryo Crisis would stay in here. Cavalier probably would not stay in here. Uh, Tamio, Tamio, Tamio might stay in. We'll keep it for now. We'll cut all the stuff that is not going to be kept. Uh, Corpse Knight definitely would be kept in here. Um, Leaf Kindred would not because there's a better option now. And a Boreal Grazer is kind of weird too. Like I like a Boreal Grazer, but I think that uh, just mana rampers in general are better because getting to seven lands is what you need. You don't need fast mana to get into like a Nissa. So Grazer would go. Grazer was kind of cool because it had zero toughness as, or zero power as well. So you could get as many of them back. So then we go uh, Midnight Reaper uh, like this. And then I put the cat combo in here. So we would go uh, Cauldron Familiar. And then we go Oven as another way. And Priest might go to the sideboard. I don't know if Priest is good enough for the main, but it would definitely go into something like the sideboard um, over here. And then we would get the Aristocrat Vampire, the, the Blood Artist type vampire with the, the Cruel Celebrant. See, Yorian probably would still want to be in here. I'm not sure. I think that maybe we could cut down. Uh, but then we'd want Mr. Snake. And probably as a four of. Hydro Crisis would probably want to be in here too. And then, I don't know, that might be... Like, you could go... We had Voracious Hydra in the sideboard, but we also have Ugin... Uh, the Ugin's Conjurant could go in here, and we could also, um, 
go like i wonder if yorion's actually necessary like we'd keep it as our because you'd, you'd probably want a big deck because one of the things that i have noticed with this particular deck is you do mill quite quickly and we definitely want another sacrifice outlet in the form of woe strider And I don't know how many copies of these you'd run, but like Willow Strider would give you some more uh, oomph with the Midnight Reaper and some of these other cards. Um, it makes like the Abrillo Grazer a lot better though at that point, uh, but Gilded Goose would still get, come in here. And this deck would not be relying on, so Tamu would get cut. This deck wouldn't be relying on self mill. So instead of Ugin's Conjurit, I think this would give us enough X spells to just put the Voracious Hydras in the mix here. And they actually work a lot better with having converted mana cost two, like maybe an Ivy Elemental as well. So an Ivy Elemental, because then you can do this chain, because this has a converted mana cost one. So Death always just says when a creature you control dies, uh, return a creature of lesser. So you get the, the Ivy Elemental into, uh, into the Stone Coil Serpent. So possibly we'd actually want. So Hydrocrasis probably wouldn't want to be in here at all. We can cut the islands. And then go more into planes rather than islands. Um, yeah, I don't think islands the right route to go with this particular deck. So we go. Um, let's see here. So stone. So so the whole combo would be voracious hydra would see ivy elemental would see stone coil serpent and they they wouldn't loop, but at least you'd get three cards out of one with Death's Oasis, and then. Other cards that so so you wouldn't want like self mill type cards in this particular deck. Probably priest would want to be in the main at that point. Possibly not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we'd want to go like more impact cards of self mill, or if this is just good with the sacrifice and the midnight reaper draw. So is there another draw outlet when a creature dies? Draw. Like at this point too, um, you might want to just go the. Uh, planeswalker that sacrifices creatures. So something like a better planeswalker would be the Veraska in this mix. Azoni would probably want to be here in a one of, and Luminous would also. So you'd want this combo as well. Luminous Broodmoth and the Nightmare Shepherd just as a one of. Uh, so this is very similar to the deck that I did build though. Again, we don't know the right amounts of cards that would want to go in this particular strategy with going with the midnight reaper and the witch's oven um uh, but in theory this uh this card definitely would um or this this would definitely work as an option so what was a card we we're going to throw in here while i was thinking about it so nightmare shepherd 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 so nightmare shepherd so this also creates like an ability for you to exile the creatures and get more oomph out of the uh abilities here for luminous broodmoth the nightmare shepherd uh so when you're ready to combo with nethroi then you can sacrifice them uh to get back the luminous broodmoth to get, let, let them back come back with flying and then you can sacrifice them again to let them come back with uh just as one ones so with woe strider it just it's going to be a win condition which is probably just one cruel celebrant or one corpse knight uh Azoni's kind of cool here too is when you start to mill you'll get a lot of creatures in the graveyard then Azoni and corpse knight can just d dish off a lot of damage so of course you need more lands in this mix let's just add some lands here some temple gardens um some godless shrines and i mean the, you, you of course just to, so it saves the deck at the top here uh, of course you need more lands than this so there'd be some sort of uh maybe a two 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 split with i don't know we do want these cards because they do sack themselves uh, for the Midnight Reaper. But that's really going all in on the Midnight Reaper at that point. And I'm not sure if that's the right route to go. And Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant, yeah, they'd be wanted. Witches Oven, Cauldron Familiar. Something like this would be the right route to go. At this point, like Trail of Crumbs gets interesting too with the Witches Oven. But probably not the right route to go. Uh, again, Yorion probably... I don't even know if Yorion is necessary in this. It's not really. Yeah, because it can't have another win condition with blinking Izoni and then having a corpse knight out. So having that option available would definitely be uh, good with Yorion. So that would be a, a, a version of, of this um, Nethroi deck running the Midnight Reaper and the Witch's Oven combo, which I do think is a uh, pretty decent shell to start building off of. You'd still want about 33 to 37 lands, I would assume, uh, for the right, right land counts for an 80 card deck however this is the deck that's been working out for me so let's go ahead and save um the deck that i've been actually doing quite well with is this 
No, that's the one we just edited, wasn't it? Yep, this version. Okay, so this is a self-mill version with some goodies from uh, Guilds of Ravnica that we haven't played in a while. So the really key card in this deck is Molder Hulk. Molder Hulk doesn't have the best synergy with Nethroi, but it's going to be your ramp spell, and it's going to give you a 6-6 beater. So it's going to give your opponents, especially if we're on um, a Fires of Invention type shell, this can actually block pretty decently and isn't a very good Teferi balance back spell because it's going to be ramping you back up. Uh, so Molder Hulk is, is super good in a self-mill strategy. We're still going to go Yorion in this particular shell with our 80 card deck because this is really cool with Yorion because we actually do want a big deck because the uh, ability to self-mill is, is there. So the cards that we're going to be running for kind of the mana dorks here are going to be Gilded Goose and Skull Prophet. So Skull Prophet is going to be able to put cards in your graveyard uh, as well as add for black or uh, green. Um, Gilded Goose is just going to add for anything plus have that zero uh, power. Then we're going to add some cards like Corpse Churn. So Corpse Churn is going to help us get back uh, Nethroid in case it gets milled. And I did have the Acolyte in this position because Acolyte could be bounced with Yorion. But I found that you need to be running this as a 2-drop rather than a 4-drop. You need to be milling as quickly as possible. So uh, waiting till the Acolyte. So let me let me show you what the Acolyte is. So maybe I can spell Acolyte correct. So the Acolyte of Affliction is when it enters the battlefield, you put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you can return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So Acolyte would be able to return... Uh, Yorion, if Yorion were to die, and you could, could have this really grindy long game uh, where you could run Acolyte, Yorion, Yorion, Ac or, or at least you get a lot of value out of that and be able to, if you have two Acolytes, you'll be able to reanimate them. In fact, it might be okay. Uh, I don't probably don't need a Gem Razor in the side. I don't know, possibly we could put Gem Razor, Razor in the side still. Um, but this is where you could put the Acolyte combo. Uh, possibly we could go down like some Voracious Hydras. I don't know. Voracious Hydras is probably not necessary in this particular shell. Um, that will give it an option there. But I decided to go to Corpse Churn instead because I think Corpse Churn is y y earlier on. You can Corpse Churn. You can get some very relevant cards at that point. Uh, you can get, if you have to use it early, uh, before you get the Nethroi out. And it's also instant speed, which is really cool about Corpse Churn because you can instant speed Nethroi back from your graveyard to your hand and then cast it on turn. You get back at Zonies with Corpse Churn and still have mana open, Molder Hulk, same thing, Luminous Brood Moss. Uh, you can actually get your Yorion back uh, with a Corpse Churn as well. So this particular list is going to run Gilded Goose for the one drop, and then it's going to go Mire Triton for the, the the two drop with the Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant, and Glow Spore Shaman, which is also going to help you with your, your mana fixing. Um, so you can get back a land from your graveyard and then play it the next turn. So it allows us to run a lo lower land count than you would on an 80-card deck. Skull Prophet, we already talked about it. Gorging Vulture, this card's actually pretty good. It puts four cards in your graveyard and gains a life for each creature. So it usually is uh, mill four, gain two, and have a 2-2 two -two flyer. That's not a bad card. We have Woe Strider, again, a very good sack outlet for the Cruel Celebrant. This deck is more on the lines of Corpse Knight. In fact, I'm not sure if Cruel Celebrant wants to be cut down to a two of or just completely cut uh, because it's not the greatest in this particular deck because besides Woe Strider, and in fact, we could actually cut Woe Strider and cut out the Cruel Celebrant and cut out this sort of combo here and just go in more on the Corpse Knight and then go more self-mill strategy cards like Gorging Vulture and the Corpse Churn. I do like the idea of Cruel Celebrant, though, uh, because it does give that ability for Woe Strider combo with a Luminous Broodmoth, Nightmare Shepherd, Woe Strider. But we're going to have to see if the Cruel Celebrant actually is deserving in this deck because it could be more of an enter the battlefield type deck with self milling. So I could definitely see going up in Corpse Churn, going into Acolytes, uh, going for just the all in. Um, of Nethroi being reanimated. At that point, you could go, if you cut Cruel Celebrants, you cut the Woe Strider, you cut the Luminous Broodmoth, you cut the Nightmare Shepherd. Um, that gives us 10 slots. So there we could go on a full package of Corpse Churns. We could get the combo of Acolytes in there. We could get Gorging Vultures, and we could probably put something like four Paradise Druids in this mix to help out with the ramping into, you know, m mana is very, very important in this particular deck. And so, you know, it's fine just to go into uh, big, or, or, or into trying to get that mana uh, utilized and ready to go uh, for the Nethroid. So that's like an option uh, that we can go. Like sideboard's not that important right now. I just have Priests of Forgotten Gods that could come in. And maybe this is where the Switcherui package is with the Cruel Celebrant combo with Luminous Broodmoth, Nightmare Shepherd. It does give that Woe Strider combo with Cruel Celebrant another 
um, outlet though. So I'm going to keep it for now. So as far as mana is concerned, we're, we're going to go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, uh, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 in this sort of package. You do want some of the temples. Um, I'm not running the, the black white temple because you want your green sources. Um, and then the, the Indatha Triome is another green source here. It's just, you know, it's a tri land, so it works for here. And then Fable Passage also works to find the specific plains and, and swamps. Not sure if the Fable Passage, yeah, Fable Passage probably does deserve that slot instead of Godless Shrines, but then just a two of Godless Shrines because we mainly need the green mana uh, for the the Skull Prophets, the Glow Spore Shamans, and these the Molder Hulks. Those are more of our fixings. So that's kind of where I'm at with this deck. It's, it's done very, very good. I'm actually been able to, to race Fires of Invention decks um, and actually beat them. So they, they, they keep running too much, much, uh, like they need the perfect hand to really push through. So they need to have to have the Cavalier and, or the Kenrith. And if they, you know, kind of struggle or kind of slower, then it'll give us that turn to get to seven and Nethery just wins the game. Uh, just went again, it's a doom foretold deck and just kill, 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 just Kaya's wrath, Kaya's wrath, uh, doom foretold, just really trying to lock me out. And it was just, Drop Corpse Knight drops his Zoni, and, and I think I dished off 22 damage with that, which was pretty insane. Um, so there's some pretty cool angles you can play with this deck. It's kind of a fun synergistic deck. Um, another card you can run in this one is, since we if we, we cut the corpse turns, is you can run the card, the 4 or 5 that reduces your creatures by 1, and that's pretty significant too in the deck. Uh, it doesn't reduce some of these that have the double casting costs though, uh, but it does like reduce the, the Woe Strider as well as the uh, escape activation is, and it does reduce the the, co the cost of Netherite. But right now, I just don't think it's it's necessary in Corpse Turn. I'm giving the the nod to over other cards. All right, so now that I've rambled for 16 minutes explaining exactly how this deck um, um, works, man, I I complain about one of my buddies being thorough. Uh, we'll go ahead and give this a shot. So I'm just gonna play in a best of one. Um, I didn't explain the sideboard, but the sideboard are pretty obvious. Like Ashok's pretty good for a self mill and eating your opponent's graveyard, so that's probably what it wants to be like a, uh, anywhere from two to a four of. All right, so let's see if we can get a decent matchup here that will give us some time to get going. Apologize for kind of on the laggy computer at home here since it's Sunday and we are closed at the store, so. Hopefully it's not too laggy with my OBS going. So this is probably going to be a mulligan. Unfortunately, we don't have a black source. I could like YOLO for a Temple of Plenty for a black source, but uh, this is much better. So I think the right call is just to get rid of the Gilded Goose here. The Gilded Goose doesn't curve with anything. And so Skull Prophet, Triton, and Cruel Celebrant. We could actually get rid of the Celebrant. Yeah, I think the Celebrant. So keep six, and we'll throw the Celebrant. So we are going against probably Fires of Invention with the Orion. Orion actually goes in a ton of decks right now. There's like Elementals, an Elementals deck with the Orion. There is a um, Doom Foretold deck with the Orion. So it doesn't have to be Fires, but most likely as far as as far as is pushing somewhere between. It's like forty percent of the meta. Um, so I'm hoping that they'll actually. Yeah, I don't know if they actually need to ban companions as much as they need to ban Fires of Invention with companions. So they might go that route. Who knows? So I think the, the be best play here is just Ogre Tomb and then get the Skull Prophet online. So now we have the Mire Triton. We can start dishing out some... Uh, we can start building up our graveyard with the Skull Prophet. And... Which is an Omen of the Sea. So this one might just be Control with Yorion. So Fail Passage is not the play this turn. We'll just put out... Um, Mire Triton. There is a Corpse Knight. So I get Corpse Churn... I think I still want to be building up my graveyard. Well, I think three damage is actually better than building up my graveyard at this point. I'm not sure. Or does corpse churning back? Nah, corpse churn's not where we want to be either. So we'll pass. We do want to build up our graveyard. Kind of feels weird with a 3 1. I mean, Skull Prophet's kind of cool because it's aggressive. Because this deck can be aggressive too with like 
we have two three ones for two mana. So this does look like more of a Teferi control. So we do have to worry about like, like if, if they're running Ashok in the main. Elspeth Conquer's death isn't too horrible for us to deal with. I actually like our chances here. So I don't care about Teferi. Teferi can bounce. Probably Skull Prophet. Hmm. Oh, I was going to do Corpse Turn, but yeah, that can't happen with Teferi. Shutting down instances. Uh, we'll go to my turn here. I probably should have just uh, cracked a, a food token to make a food token just because we can. Um, let's go ahead and kill Teferi. Play the Skull Prophet. And do we need... No, we don't... We don't need the Fable Passage out this turn. We definitely want Molder Hulk. Not going to Corpse Turn this turn either. So in pretty decent shape. It's fairies out of the way. Probably another Teferi's coming down because they always have Teferi's galore. I wonder if I go for Molder Hulk here just because it, it ramps me pretty good. But I lose the Corpse Turn for Nethroy later on. This is definitely the matchup, I think. So three mana. I'm not sure what my opponent is doing here. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and corpse turn. Even though I was drawing a Molder Hulk. See if my opponent's going to counter it. I mean, I don't care if my opponent counters it. It's not a big deal. All right, so we will get back the Molder Hulk. And there we find our guy, so that was good. Do we, have a, we don't have a win here quite yet. We don't have enough guys in the graveyard. Because, I mean, we almost have... So what do I need? I need white, black. I need a black source. So get that swamp. And... Molder Hulk. Ah, oh, opponent has mana up. We'll attack first. And we're actually going to be risky here. See if we can reduce the cost. We indeed did. Perfect. That worked out good for us. This will probably get... Uh, oh, it did not get countered. So, Temple is just the best thing here, since we don't have any mana to utilize. Woe Strider. I think Woe Strider is actually pretty decent. To keep on top. So, we have Corpse Knight. One, two, three. We have two Corpse Knights in the mix. Alright, so Shatter the Sky... So that just gives us Woe Strider. And I think we have it next turn. So I can't sack itself. Unfortunately, Glass Casket was the perfect answer. But we just won. I think we just won here. Pretty sure we did. So a mutated goat's going to win us the game. Because I think that's lethal. I think we have we have lethal here. Because this goes over. That's five damage. And that brings Corpse Knight. Corpse Knight. Guild gets... Oh, we're not going to have enough power. So Mire Triton... Mire Triton. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'd rather have that than a Skull Prophet. Yep. So, see how much damage that is. I didn't have time to calculate it out, but... There's another Woe Strider. 
I think we actually kill Narset here. Gives us better odds. This was overwhelming. Another shatter. So we'll just get rid of lands here. Temple Garden. Swamp. Temple. And... Fail Passage. Cruel Celebrant is interesting. I think we just want to dig for another Nethri. So, we're okay here. Yeah, we needed that Cruel Celebrant in the graveyard, and then that would have been lethal with my opponent shattering. We're still in okay shape. So, I don't think I will Strider yet. Yeah, let's sack it. Cruel Celebrant. Do we know that was on top? No, we didn't, because it would have been info. Okay, so let's go Glow Spore Shaman. Which we don't want to land. Oh, geez, all lands. Decline that. Um, Go ahead and get in there with the Woe Strider. Oh, I probably should have gone Cruel Celebrant first. So then in case it gets... Brazen Borrowered, huh? That's fine. Most likely we'll neutralize this. I don't know. My opponent's got to be really careful with the neutral. Ooh, let's it happen. And we'll just use it. Got to get my opponent's neutralizes out of their hands. Yeah, he should neutralize this, definitely. So, two shatters down, a Teferi and our set down. So I'm thinking Yorion's just going to come here and blink the Omen because they need a blocker. Or not. So probably another Brazen Borrower in hand. Uh, Shark Tornado, probably. Yep. Now, do I care about... No, we don't care. Oh, gonna go there, huh? That's interesting. At least it gives me a trigger. Oh, because it didn't want me to, to have it back. I see. Okay. Let's go Azoni here. Unfortunately, we have a Corpse Knight for Azoni. Actually, I'll keep the man up in case my opponent has... A another glass casket so I can sack the woe strider. I was gonna sack for a land drop, possibly. So my opponent needs another shatter. And they've blown two of them. My opponent has another shatter, that's just terrible luck with an 80 card deck. Narset, though, can dig for a Shatter. Still not the greatest play. See if they find their third Shatter. Nope, just an Omen, so this should do it for us. Because I'm not even thinking what my opponent can do here to get out of this much damage. So Zoni's going to take this one, most likely.
And there we go. We beat Blue White Control. Still in the uh, the trash gold tier. <laughs> Haven't bothered to grind for the past two seasons though. Um, you know, made Mythic for three seasons in a row, which was a pretty decent accomplishment. Uh, but haven't really tried this this past couple times. Alrighty, let's play one more. I'll play another one to see how well it goes. But you got to you got to see the gist of it too, and that wasn't like ideal. There are a couple of things if we would have milled into the graveyard, we would just won. Um, I think one more corpse not or one more. Well, no, because I think we need we still needed a a wolf strider to get back if we did have the oh no no because the shatter sky would have killed the the vampire and then done enough damage. Um, uh, it's not the best hand ever, but I think it's ideal. And of course, another Yorion. So now we've played two matchups with four Yorions in the command zone. Or the companion zone, what do you want to call it? We'll start with a Temple Plenty rather than a Field of pa field Passage. We don't need the, the, the secondary Wolf Strider. Ends up being pretty good. And there's Novagrome Tomb. Perfect. There's a Celebrant. And next turn we have a Wolf Strider. Or another Celebrant. My opponent's probably like, what's going on? Yorion with Cruel Celebrant. Don't judge me. I don't play fires all day, nerds. Yeah, I actually would like them to uh, keep companions around first. I know that's, that that sounds terrible, but I think fires invention is actually worse for standard right now than than companions are. Because you ban companions, fires is still a thing, and it's it, it it's a problematic card because it screws with what decks can be played. Alrighty, so we'll go another overgrown tomb. Go Wolf Strider. Get a Goat. Get a Cruel Celebrant. Don't know if I want to sack it right now. I think we're going to get hit with a Deafening Clarion here. Because even though they're an 80 card deck, they always have a Deafening Clarion on turn 3. Yeah, this is probably... Yeah, still, I think this is like a... That could be Jeskai Control. Narset, huh? Mind and body should move in unison. Like keep an open mind. I think I'm going to go for another... Rather than a Scry, because I don't really care what's all in the top of my library. So I'm not going to kill it. Yeah, we didn't... That's fine. So that's actually pretty good. So we can go uh, Fable Passage here. What do we need? Another green source, I think? We don't need white. Yeah, we do need another white. We have white source in our hand, though. So let's go green here. Go Triton. Two lands in the graveyard, which is okay. Go Narset. Go at my opponent. Could have made the argument just for going my opponent there because 13 is getting really close with double Cruel Celebrants because that's 10 life right there. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was the right right call. I'm thinking it's Teferi Woe Strider. Fire, oh, fires. It is a Fires deck. Womp Womp. So Teferi here. Bounce the Woe Strider. They could have a shadow of the sun, shadow of the sun too. All right, that's that's perfect. Okay, they need to go over the wolf strider. They don't get a card, and we'll just kill off the the goat. Actually, lethal. I think that's actually. Ooh. We definitely want nightmare shepherd. So now I can actually sac sacrifice a Cruel Celebrant. Huh. What actually... Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can sacrifice the the the, the, the Cruel Celebrant here. Because we don't need it back in our hand because we're casting Nightmare Shepherd. Yeah, I think that's the right play. 
See if I did the, the mana correctly. So now we can go... Um, doesn't matter. So Temple Garden to play tapped. Maybe I didn't do it correctly. Let's see here. Because we can sacrifice the Triton. No, I don't think it gives me enough. See, we have one, two, three, four. I don't miss it. See, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it doesn't quite get us there. So possibly shouldn't have killed that cruel celebrant. However, if my opponent tries to board wipe, we win. Because we sack, sack, and then that does four exactly. And there's one spell in the form of Narset. So I'm not sure what my opponent can get here off the top to get out of this. Teferi's definitely not the right card. That's more like it. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Yeah, I don't care about that. Don't worry, I got this. Because that's two spells. So point can't cast spells now. It fires. And it does not have an activation. So we win this one. So that earlier attack, I probably should have attacked not Narset and attacked right in. I don't know if that would have changed stuff, though, if Narset would have found something. And now my opponent's got to be completely BM. Yep. Ah, <sighs> yep. Use your timeouts. You're such a gem. So glad you're part of the community. Pero thirteen. I wanted to say that I that it gets better as you get up to mythic, but it really doesn't. People are still salty when you're all the way up to mythic. Give him a good old nice. Oh, he does have Shark Typhoon. Whoops. I didn't play around Shark Typhoon. I just messed that up. So do I sacrifice anything here? No. That's fine. Should have cast Nightmare Shepherd earlier on. That was dumb of me. So do I just win here, though, with... Yeah, we'll get Nightmare Shepherd back. I think I screwed up. Still can't board wipe, though, which is fine. Put thoughtfulness before action. So I take it back, Mr. Piero. You were thinking. Possibly. Omen won't do it. Or at least have one more spell. So possibly Omen will do it with Urion. Jeez. And they can make a Castle Ardenvale. Or possibly another Sharknado. Here we, go. we have Woe Strider. No, Woe Strider can't come back, actually. I'm an actually pretty pretty crappy... Uh... Oh, they just showed me that, though. So Woe Strider does have five in the graveyard. So Temple... Woe Strider. Just get some activations here to, to show that we have this.
Yeah, I don't even need to sack anything. They just come back. And there we have it. So even a little bit of a mistake on my part would have had it with the either attacking in with the uh, Wolf Strider into opponent rather than in our set and attacking into to, uh, or casting the Night, <laughs> the Night Shepherd first. So I forgot about Shark Tornado. That was my bad. All right, let's give us one more. So, so far we've beat two, you know, legit decks. Hey, we noticed this too. This is what drives my, my or, or grinds my gears. I've been watching some of my buddies play arena and they're uh, haven't ever made mythic before and they are all the way in diamond and in platinum and the the quality of decks and players they keep going up against is not the same as what i've been experiencing in even silver like silver all the way through silver up to now i've been playing against fires invention decks tier decks over and over and over and both my friends don't have like high collections of cards and so they're they're not really necessarily playing bad decks they're they're playing uh you know, like mono green type strategies, and they keep going up against opponents that just are the same thing, like non tier jank decks. And like, so they even for rank, they must have some sort of internal matchmaking rating that matches you up against opponents with similar ratings as yours. So you get kind of stuck in this, like, oh, I, I hit mythic once, I have a high rating, therefore I keep going against Fires of Vision all day long. Anyway, that's my my gripe. I just want to know if anyone else has experienced that. Because I, I watched someone also get all the way to, to Mythic with like kind of a janky deck. And like, oh, I never see this deck. I'm like, how in the world do you never see this deck? Y you play against it nonstop. If, uh... Oh, we have to go Temple Guard. Our Temple Garden here can get us the Ghost Spore Shaman. Yep, that's fine. I don't know if that makes sense. Probably going up against like a Casual Wars ramp deck. We might actually want a land. No, we don't. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We probably should get there for our good old. Gosh, this guy's pretty good even by itself. Five mana for a five, five death touch like life link. Well, can't attack in now. Um. One of the temples is fine. Woe Strider is fine. Yeah, Woe Strider, Woe Strider is fine to stay on top. So now we're one land away. So our Thrashing Brontodon is going to come in here. And I think we do block. I know that sounds kind of stupid, but I think it's the right play. Gives us another... Alright, so we'll Corpse Turn here, because Will Strider's fine to get. Or throw in the Graveyard, either way. And, oh, do I want the second one? I honestly think I just want a Glow, a glow Spore Shaman here. Weird play, but I think it's the right one. So, I do... Yes, I have, I have enough to play both. Well, should have gone the other way around because I could have guaranteed that land drop, but I think the Temple Plenty is going to do it too. So we'll decline on this as well. Because I don't need a Black Source. Yeah, I'm fine. And we'll hit the Plains and the Triton. And now we're getting closer. All right, there's two more key pieces. A Death Sprout. That's a card I have not seen in a long time. It used to be my key card that I ran in um, Sultai Ramp versus uh, Fires of Invention decks. It was just so dead versus like the vast majority. Ugh, Gadwick. Gadwick it is. So I still want... Nah. Do I want another card in the graveyard this turn? I don't think so. So... Plains gets us a Woe Strider. 
and we can get all lands here. So Fabled, Overgrown, Temple, Corpse Churn is fine. Feel like we might get Casually Award next turn though. I think I do attack with Glow Spore. Because getting down to 15 is very relevant. Yeah, we're going to get Casually and it's going to hurt. The casual, I think, is going to be perfect. So, kill the Woe Strider. Yeah, that casualty is going to be rough. I don't know if I'm going to be able to come back from a casualty. Nissa. Well, Nissa's better, because can Nissa actually do a casualty? Yes, it can't. Can't, because Water Grave's the other card. So one, two, three, four, five is the only mana. So we might actually one, two, three, four. We don't quite have it here. We're gonna get some value out of Azoni though. Harness the elements. Tyrant Scorn. Did I kill both? I'm going to kill the Glow Spore. Because, yeah, I, I definitely want... This one, I want to scry away as well. Yeah. I actually should have kept that Overgrown Tomb on top. So, Woe Strider. Woe Strider's not where I want to be. I have to go... F I could go Temple Plenty Woe Strider. Maybe that is better. Other than Casualty of War... Zona gives me a... I think Zoni's the better play. So, we'll go Fable Passage. Crack it. Get a Black Source. Because this is going to die. We need another Black Source. And I think Zoni's just the best thing to... to chuck out here because my opponent doesn't have I still need another land is the problem one two three four five six yeah these stupid tap lands yeah I definitely should have kept the overgrown tomb on top because that would have given us some more play I think I'm gonna end up losing this one like a big the best case scenario is like a big hydroid crisis and then I can untap or untap land Worst case scenario is Casual Wars, but I'm not certain my opponent would have. Looks like it is going to be a Hydra Crisis. Okay, this is pretty good because this is, does give us a chance. Be wary of the ground you walk on. So Hydra Crisis for 12. It's not Mass Manipulation. It could be Finale. If it is Finale, I do lose. Racist Hydra, I absolutely don't lose. And that's actually killing my Zoni, which is, you know, pretty clutch, actually. Huh, okay. This is interesting here because it's giving me a chance to attack in for a bunch. And if I draw an untapped land, I would just win. Trample. And the, the, the damage isn't relevant either. Yeah, damage is not relevant here. So I'm not, I'm not going to block it. So I need an untapped land. Oh, so close. I don't think we're going to get there because we one, two, three, four, five, six. We're one. This temple plenty just lost us the game. So overgrown tomb. We don't need it now. I mean, I might as well keep it on top because it gives me a chance to play around casualty of war. If that makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's no... I'll keep it on top. And then we need as many... As, as, as much blockers out as possible. So we gill the goose. And woe strider, because this also allows us to... Sacrifice a... 
Oh, yeah. Well, that was a sacrifice of food. I still think I'm going to die here. Because I need to keep one guy alive. If we somehow survive this turn, I think I win. It kind of sucks that it was a Temple of Plenty. Like, best case scenario, I hope my opponent just, just throws out a huge Hydra Crisis. So, that's fine. We're not going to sacrifice anything. Oh, I'm gonna be so Gilda Go Goose is the card. I can block with everything. Okay, so we're gonna block past the blockers. We're gonna block here. Block here. Block here. Man, Arena does this so. Block here. Block here. Block here. Let's keep back a couple. I think we're okay. I think that none of these have trample. No trample, no trample, no trample, no trample. So that's doing nine. It's going through here. And then we can sacrifice the... Yeah, and that lets us two targets. I think we can block one more. We're fine. I think that's the best route. I didn't miss one, did I? I hate Arena how it does this. My opponent would have cast another Tyrant Scorn or something here. So we're going to go for it. We're going to mutate on the Gilded Goose. And it worked. Okay, so I think we're okay. We're definitely getting a Zony. So Corpse Knight. Um... Izoni, that's four. So it's four. Meyer Triton is five, six. Ghost Borer Shaman is nine. I think that's the best way to do it. Oops, I... I, I just... Uh, I did it in the wrong order. Oh, it didn't matter. I hit all lands. So let's see if Meyer Triton. Meyer Triton, I literally just hit all lands. And that's exactly lethal. So it actually worked for us here, even though I, tri I, I stacked my triggers like a noob. Anyway, there you have it. I mean, those are all legit decks that we just beat. All of them. Um, we had a Jeskai Control times two. Oh, Jeskai Fires. Uh, Azorius Control. And now we beat... Um, Simic Ramp or or Sultai Ramp, which are all very legit. And they're all clutch too, like some clutch draws. So really loving this deck. I'll have the deck in the link in the description below. You can copy post it and let me know what you do, especially the, the, the first version we looked at. There's one more version I want to try with Nethroi, and that's with Thassa's Oracle. But I don't know if that's the right route to go with Thassa's Oracle. So the whole object of the uh, idea of the game is just mill, 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 mill. And then, and you'll be doing with more of the blue mill cards because you have the mer the the uh, zero four, um, Merfolk. They can mill four cards, and then there's a few other cards. Possibly like even a better strategy, you go like a Lucky Clover strategy. That that way, Brazen Borrower can give you some time as well, and 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 Fave Wishes can give you some time as are some other control cards like a mono blue so it'd be blue green is all you need for the color combinations and then Nethroi getting back Thassa's Oracle so you can run Jace Jace works very very well in it I mean maybe we can just uh theory craft this deck real quick so so let's do uh what's this the Merfolk called it's a Augur Bolas is pretty good here too uh Merfolk Secret, Secret Keeper and then Thassa's Oracle so then we'd want Lucky Clover. So, and then we want Fave Wishes because that also helps. 
uh, get us there. So Fay of Wishes, and then Brazen Borrower can help. And so what other uh, adventure cards are there? We can look to see. Because I'd want this mainly to be mono blue. So I don't think like Animating Fairy or Queen of Ice necessarily wants to be in here. Uh, do we need black for Nethroy? Nethroy also needs black, right? Nethroy. Yeah, it needs black. So we, we would want adventures as far as black is, con is concerned. So it probably would be something like, well, we could run Ashuk in this shell. Uh, something like Order of the Midnight could go in. And that could help get us maybe Murderous Rider to make the Lucky Clover shell work. Um, these Falmer Knights aren't terrible. I'd put them in just as a, a substitute here. So how do we... Now, to self-mill, we need Jace. So I'd run Jace as a four of, and I'd also run Ashiok in the main. Something like that. And then Nethroi. And then, of course, we'd have to have green and... You'd have to have green to hit that green. Or, you know, you don't even have to have green, actually. You could have white. We need the black. I wonder if white actually, uh, with, like, going into the giant, would actually, uh, a giant killer. And a few of the other adventure cards you get from that. But green also gets, green gets some pretty good adventure cards. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, this is, because it, it, we could also ramp, because you could go, uh, instead of going in heavy into the black... We could definitely go into the green and just have black be an afterthought. So you go Edgewall Innkeeper. And yeah, this is actually pretty cool with the, the Thassa's Oracle. You go Edgewall Innkeeper. You go uh, Love Struck Beast. And then you could go Beanstalk Giant. And then that gives you kind of the, the Sultai Adventures type shell of it. And I don't know if you need like Jace's at that point. Or some of these other things like Falmer Knights. But then Nethroi would be able to reanimate. The whole idea would be to get as many cards in the graveyard as possible for the with the Merfolk uh, Shorekeeper. I think Jace can also get you there uh, because you're milling two per turn and still, you know, drawing a card. Possibly that's where the Murderous Riders and Brazen Borrowers could get there. And then Fae of Wishes could give you access to everything else in the sideboard. So you want like one Nethroi in the sideboard um, and then a bunch of other cards that just like Casual Wars would be great in the sideboard uh, for the, the um, Fae of Wishes to tutor up. Uh, some of the other ultimatums, I'm sure. So this would be a pretty cool deck idea, too. Um, Nethroid Adventure. I think it would make a, a pretty decent... And you wouldn't have to go... there. Like, another way you could go with... Instead of Thassa's Oracle... Uh, with... Instead of, like, Merfolk Secret Keeper of Thassa's Oracle type, type shell... You could go into the... Uh, just into the Elementals to help also ramp for Thassa's Oracle. Because then you get some neat cards with... Is, is Thassa... You'd run Thassa in the mix. Um, you would run... Uh, probably... Agent of Treachery, I would say. And then have a mill that way. I mean, Agent would probably want to go in this one too. With Nethrobian. I don't know. I guess we're all in on the Thassa's Oracle. But this is a pretty cool shell too. Anyway, hope you enjoyed these videos. I'll still try to brew. I'm still frustrated with magic, beyond frustrated. Like I like my rants videos, they're not done. I have a bunch of good rants still about Commander. How uh, Commander Precons, I think, have just uh, left a sour taste, at least in my mouth. Uh, someone that's been playing Commander since Darkest uh, Dark Ascension, before Commander Precons. Um, I, you know, I think the commander was really, really cool to take like a, a janky uh, legendary card that didn't work in standard that was fun and build around it. Uh, I think cards like Noth of the Guilt Leaf, uh, that was one of the cards that I, I built early on. Um, and then there's still a lot of poor designs from that. I want to, I definitely want to rant about in <laughs> this, uh, for, for this set and even for, uh, Theros as well as the, set before it i think we have we've had three really push sets four with war of the spark uh four push sets that are almost back to back to back that have just left a really sour taste in my mouth for pioneer that'll probably be my next rant is about is about pioneer i hope you enjoyed this video this has been kevin with rogue deck builder thanks for watching